Five minutes each. I'll introduce you by name. Tell us about yourself, what you're doing, what you're running for, and what you intend to do. Then we'll go through all the speakers, and then we'll probably get to dispense with a regular meeting. And afterwards, if you if you don't have anywhere else to go, you can mill about and speak with people at the RTCs who have some questions for you. So with that, the first one up will be Mr. Peter Schiff, who's candidate for the U.S. Senate. Hi, thanks everybody for inviting me here. I know I've only got five minutes, so you guys are going to have to get the clip note version. Uh, but I will kind of hang out uh, for questions about, about the issues. Um, anyway, I'm a local businessman. I'm an entrepreneur. I own a broker firm based in Westport, Connecticut. I have about 100 employees uh, in six uh, offices throughout the country. I started my company you know, by myself. I worked out of my one-bedroom apartment in, in Los Angeles and, and built the company up. And I kind of achieved some degree of uh, notoriety both here and abroad as being one of the few people in my profession or probably a few people in, in, in the world who publicly uh, foretold the economic events of 2008. I did it for years uh, as a guest on various television shows. I have been on, used to be on CNBC about once a week. Starting in 2005, they were calling me Dr. Doom. I was on CNN, I was on Fox, I was on Bloomberg, basically laying out the economic collapse that I saw coming. I, I put a lot of my thoughts into a best-selling book that was published in February of 2007 called Crash Proof, How to Profit from the Coming Economic Collapse. And in that book, and in these television appearances, I laid out a case for why I thought our economy was literally a house of cards and was in danger of imploding. And unfortunately, I was right. But the reason that I'm now running for the United States Senate is because I believe the government is now in the process of laying the foundation for a far greater economic crisis that's going to hit this country most likely before 2012. It's possible it could happen after that date, but I think it's far more likely that it happens earlier. What very few people in Washington seem to understand is that the government is the source of our problems. The reason that I was able to predict the events of 2008, you know, the, the credit crunch, the bankruptcy of Fannie and Freddie, the collapse of our lending institutions, the greatest the, the recession since the Great Depression, was because I understood the impact government policy was having on distorting our economy. I understood how low interest rates by the Federal Reserve and legislation by Congress were creating the moral hazards and were force-feeding cheap credit into the economy. The reason that there was so much rampant speculation in Wall Street and so much you know, consumption on Main Street was not because of greed, it was because of cheap money and moral hazard supplied by the U.S. government. You see, when you go back to the, the bursting of the Nasdaq bubble in the 1990s, the recession that we should have had in early 2000 never took place because, unfortunately, President Bush and uh, uh, Fed Chairman ben, uh, 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 Alan Greenspan decided to stimulate the economy instead of allowing the recession to run its course. The recession actually would have been very helpful because the problem was not the recession, it was the phony boom that made the recession necessary to correct all those mistakes. So we had the government stimulus and we stimulated our way into a housing bubble. That, that bubble was created by the government as an antidote to the 2001 recession. Unfortunately, the leaders in Washington, maybe the party is different. You know, we have the Democrats in power now, but the prescription is the same. The government is doing the same thing. They're repeating the same mistakes that created that crisis. The monetary stimulus that we have under Ben Bernanke is now even bigger than what we had under Greenspan. And the stimulus that we're getting from Obama is much larger. You know, we're celebrating the one-year anniversary, and we're not really celebrating, of the Obama stimulus. But that is about a year after the Bush stimulus. It was all the same concept, trying to stimulate the economy by running deficits, by spending money. But you can't grow an economy by growing the government. The only way you get economic growth is by shrinking government. The only real stimulus would be to cut government spending, to repeal regulations, and to restore sound money. Unfortunately, our leaders are not concerned about the long-term health of our economy. All they're thinking about is how can they get reelected. And that is the type of thinking that produced this crisis and that is laying the foundation for the next crisis. The real economic crisis and the one I want to try to avoid or at least be there you know, when it happens so I can prevent the government from doing the wrong thing yet again is the currency crisis. Because of all the money we're printing and all the money that we're borrowing, 
we're going to destroy the value of our money. And if people thought that the financial crisis was bad because they were worried about losing their money, wait till they see how much worse it is when you don't lose your money, but your money loses its purchasing power. Meaning that when you go to the store to buy something, prices are running out of control because the government spending has destroyed the value of our money. And I want to make sure that I'm in Washington, because at this moment, there isn't a single United States senator that understands our problem, the nature of our problem, or how government policy is now actually making it worse. And I know that there are a lot of people who are running for office now as Republicans who are now claiming that they want to go to Washington and they want to shrink government and they want to cut government spending. The problem is, where have they been? I mean, we've been growing government under Democrat and Republican rule for years and nothing changes. The problem is we continue to vote people into office who really care more about staying in office and getting reelected than about following through with those principles. So I'm coming out of my private sector job. I've never sought elected office. I've obviously never held elected office. I want to go to Washington for one reason. I want to do what every other Republican has failed to do. I actually want to bring those principles to Washington and shrink government. And I want to explain to the people who are there now what the, 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 the gravity of the situation is, how dire these circumstances are. This isn't a game anymore. It's not about just getting reelected. The fate of our nation hangs in the balance. We can't continue to stimulate this economy you know, but when we're actually destroying it. So I have to get our leaders to understand that the nation is more important than their own political aspirations and that we have to deliver the bad news to the public. And unfortunately, the bad news is that after years of reckless spending, we're broke. Right? We spent trillions of dollars we didn't have buying stuff we couldn't afford and that we didn't make because of government policies that led to these mistakes. And we have, to, we have to fess up to the reality. The only way out of this mess is to save our money and to produce more. That means Americans have to spend less, we have to buy fewer cars, we have to buy fewer houses, and that means Washington has to spend less. Everybody has to cut back so that we can save money. Because we're not going to get any real economic growth until we have savings. We're not going to have jobs until we have capital. But we're not going to get capital until someone has savings to finance it. So all the while, if we continue to pursue these reckless policies, the country is going to keep getting worse. Every time the government passes another jobs bill, they're going to destroy more jobs. Because you don't create jobs by passing bills. You destroy jobs by passing bills. Jobs come from profit and they come from capital. And right now, we're destroying both. The only way we're going to get real productive employment is if the government gets out of the way. If the government can repeal all the regulations and all the taxes that are stifling job creation right now. But we can't do that unless we cut back on government spending. But we're not cutting back. Government spending is growing through the roof. This budget that, that uh, Obama just proposed is $3.8 trillion in one year. In fact, I'm sure it's going to end up being $4 trillion by the time it's all said and done. That's twice what we were spending 10 years ago. How can we double the size of government in 10 years? How can we afford all that government? We're not, most people are earning less than they were 10 years ago. How can government be consuming more? And in the meantime, in the current budget, $1.6 trillion is borrowed. The government is borrowing $0.60 cents for every dollar it collects in taxes. You can't run a country that way. We just increased the debt ceiling by $2 trillion, and that's just going to buy us one more year. How can we put $2 trillion onto the national debt in one year and expect that to continue? We are headed for a funding crisis. The Chinese, the Japanese, and the Saudis who have been buying our debt, they're not going to do it anymore because we can't pay it back. The only buyer left is going to be Ben Bernanke. And when he starts buying that debt, when he starts printing all that money, if we think we've got problems now, if we think the unemployed have problems, wait till we have runaway inflation and double-digit interest rates on top of all this unemployment. And the unemployment is not going to get better, it's only going to get worse, because the government policy that we have in place now is preventing the economy from restructuring. They're trying to reflate the bubble, but we can't do that. We have to allow resources to be reallocated. We need to allow resources, including labor, to move away from services back to goods production. We have to produce things, we have to make things, we need more jobs in, in manufacturing, but we can't transition people from service sector or government jobs to manufacturing when the government is trying to divert resources into the banking sector by propping up Wall Street or trying to prop up uh, inefficient automobile companies in Detroit. The government is trying to prop up the phony economy of the past 
And when they do that, they prevent the real economy from being created 